Het is me een groot genoegen en eer om u voor te stellen aan Alexander Gavriljuk, de Oekraïens-Australische meesterpianist, die op 6 november aanstaande weer een visadel gaat geven in de serie Meesterpianisten, waar ik me bijzonder op verheug. Niet alleen maar vanwege het prachtige programma, maar ook omdat het juist Alexander Gavriljuk is, die ondertussen werkelijk een goede vriend van mij is geworden. En um, die ik bijzonder waardeer als mens en als muzikus. Hallo Sasha. Hallo meneer Marco. We will continue in English, of course. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We know each other now for so many years. I still remember the beginning of it all. Yes, yes. Uh, I, 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 uh, I received the DVD and the CD at the same time from you and from Jorge Luis Prat, who just gave a wonderful perf performance of the Iberia Suite on October the 2nd. I know you were also in the hall. I remember so vividly receiving these DVDs and CDs from about two musicians I didn't hear about, I must admit. And as always, I, I leave it a couple of days and then I say, well, tonight I'm going to have a real good look at the DVDs. And it happens very seldom. It was the same night, by the way, and I watched your DVD and Jorge Luis DVD And I was completely, I don't know what's the right word, but uh, blown away by both of you, by the musicality, by the technique, by the presence. And next day I, I'm going to the office completely excited, speaking to Frizo, my assistant. I just heard two amazing pianists. We must invite them. So that's how everything started. And when I'm that enthusiastic, I don't like to say words, but I want to do things about it. So I immediately contacted you and Jorge Luis, and I think within one week we found dates. And um, at this moment we are speaking, you are going to give your fifth recital in the Serie Meis Pianiste, and Jorge Luis just gave, gave his fifth recital, which for me as an organizer, It's a big honor to do so, but it gives me so much pleasure because I see the reaction of the public, I see the positive energy it gives to me, and at this moment you have been playing so many times with the leading orchestras of the world, many times with the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra, the Rotterdam Philharmonic, the Zaterdag Matinee, and I think I'm allowed to say you and Jorge Luis people really know who you are now, two extraordinary musicians and pianists. And I, was, I want to, 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 to ask you some questions about, you, you played a lot of repertoire, you have a huge repertoire, and you chose for a, such a beautiful program. Um, what were your reasons, or do you have any uh, special ideas with this program, or it was just music, of course, you love, because you can only play music which is very close to you, of course. Of course, uh, Marco, it's a great pleasure for me to say that uh, that first time that we met uh, was the beginning of an amazing journey for me, which ended in my whole family moving to the Netherlands, which happened just a few months ago. I just, I wanted you uh, to say this. Yes. So you are living permanently <laughs> in Holland, which yes. for all of us and for Dutch musical life, it's a great win. Well, and for us it is an even a bigger win because we absolutely love being here. We are hugely appreciative of the culture and of the open hearts and open minds that we met and we are inspired by here. And I must say that uh, that first encounter at the Concertgebouw of hearing Alfred Brendel's one of his last concerts at, at your invitation. Yes, true was the kind of moment which will always stay in one's heart to continue to inspire and, and guide. And uh, those, that was only one of many moments that I'm very grateful for, of course. And uh, the fifth concert uh, in this concert series, which is uh, one of the most remarkable concert series, uh, 
is a, a huge event for me and uh, it is uh, very long it, it is a very long process uh, constructing a program for for for, for, for this concert uh, i try to uh, make a story uh, by combining different composers and the works by those composers i try to see the possible uh, connections between those works and how uh, one piece can be uh, related to the next and how uh, that procession of those pieces, what kind of story that, that creates and what kind of uh, atmosphere and uh, sphere it creates. So uh, the program will be uh, beginning with uh, a transcription by Bosoni of Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor, the, one of his most fam famous works a very monumental uh, work uh, uh, it is a piece which perhaps comes from the wisdom of the universe so to speak and uh, it maybe combines this kind of universal sorrow for for the humankind as well as uh, the universal joy for humankind as well and there are plenty of reasons for for those two <laughs> in our world of course uh, and that work uh, is the beginning of the program, uh, followed by a very precious uh, sonata by Haydn. Uh, in fact, uh, I know that Alfred Brendel played uh, a lot of Haydn. A lot, yes. And uh, he also played Haydn at that concert where we met for the first time. So uh, the, uh, his Haydn is very inspirational for me uh, as I was growing up. Uh, of course, and this sonata in particular, I think, combines the contrasts between the the major and the minor, the contrast between the dark and the light. There is always this uh, dialogue between the two sides. There's the, the bright, pure and innocent major, and then there is uh, the, the opposite to it, which is the uh, is somewhat sad and maybe even uh, somewhat tormented, but uh, not in the, in the same way as, as what we hear uh, in later composers, but uh, still in a very classical and a very aristocratic way, a very noble way. Uh, but uh, it is definitely uh, the contrast and the struggle between the, uh, the joy and the light and the innocence uh, and the struggle, the sadness and the darkness in this sonata. And of course, uh, the, the beautiful, joy, joyful and uh, colorful uh, third movement uh, paints a very positive picture in the sonata. With humor, actually. Yes, with, with a lot of humor, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and, and Chopin, of course, uh, the, the fantasy in F minor, which is, uh, in a way, for me, one of his most important compositions. Somehow. Totally agree. One of the deepest. Also. One of the deepest, yes. and, and somehow you can really put all of Chopin in this, in this work. Yes. Uh, you know, somehow I have this, this kind of image of Chopin standing on the edge of a very steep hill, seemingly about to fall down yet looking up uh, towards the sun with a lot of hope and faith in his eyes. This is the sort of the image I have about this, fan about this fantasy. And uh, the, the Polonaise, of course, in A flat major, which is a grandiose work uh, filled with this absolutely unique Polish aristocratic pride and joy. Uh, the heroic is the heroic, called, yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's an absolutely extraordinary work which pinpoints uh, the the essence of uh, this inspiration for Chopin's love for Poland and Polish culture and Polish uh, reality. Uh, so it's a very colorful uh, work which which ends with a lot of fireworks of course. The second part of the program is uh, a Russian a choice of works, uh, Russian composers and there is a connection between uh, the Prokofiev Sonata Number no. Three, which was written in 1917, uh, just at the time when it was a very turbulent time in, in Russia, the revolution, and uh, a lot of uncertainty between the, the old world and the new world. Which and was it's seldom played. Very I think it was played. never played in my series. Really? I may be wrong, but I. 
Uh, yeah, uh, well, it's 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 an early work by, by Prokofiev. It is still rather light-hearted compared to his later darker uh, and, yes, and, yeah. and heavier uh, works. Uh, and what's interesting is that uh, Rachmaninoff wrote his Etudes uh, Tableau uh, almost the same year, 1916 to 1917. And it's a completely different reflection on, on that environment. Uh, so it was Rachmaninoff's first substantial big work that he wrote in Russia. And uh, it's very interesting to, to, to compare uh, the vision of the, the composers about the same environment in the same uh, country and in, in, in the same year, basically. Completely two different perspectives. Of course, Rachmaninoff with his uh, overwhelming warmth and overwhelming uh, ocean of emotions and uh, the unstoppable hurricane of, of passion uh, tragedy, uh, sadness, and uh, triumph. Uh, and uh, lastly, of course, uh, the last piece will be Balakarius Lame, uh, which is uh, yeah, w one of the most uh, extraordinary works ever written for the pi for piano. Uh, quite complex, yet it is f it is really blood boiling in a way because it comes from the Caucasus. Uh, inspiration of the Caucasus dances and uh, uh, in particular the second scene comes from the Crimea region uh, and the music uh, from, from the Crimea Tartars. So uh, it is a very very colorful work which uh, brings us to another world uh, and actually uh, it's a really a celebration of life. Hmm. Uh, so that's the, the kind of uh, program that turned out. If I'm not wrong, I think that Ravel, when he wrote his Gaspard la Nuit, when he wrote, uh, when he wrote Scarbo, he wanted to write a piece that would be as difficult or even more difficult than Islamay. Yes. But I don't think it's more difficult. Well, <laughs> yes. good question. Both. <laughs> it's, it's good I don't need to two. play it. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> well, I think this, uh, nobody could have told about your program the well you the way you are telling it and I think this is so inspiring that I really hope that many people listening to you will think I must go to this concert not only because of the pub of the program but I can assure everybody that you are one of the world's greatest pianists Thank you very much. and that's really what I believe and many of my friends and my colleagues do the same. And under, under your hands or fingers, I think this will be an unbelievable concert. So I, I would try to please all of you, come on the 6th of November, because it's not only the unique acoustic of the concert hall, as you know so well, but this program will never sound so beautiful as in the Amsterdam concert hall. And I'm so happy and honored that we are, we are friends and you living so close to Amsterdam. And uh, well, we will be seeing a lot to each other many, many, many more times. And you will play in Holland many more times because I know that Holland means a lot to you, your wife and the children. And your youngest daughter is about two years old. And I think you told me she speaks about better Dutch than English by now, <laughs> yes. which is, of course, very important. Absolutely. Well, Sasha, I call you Sasha, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm looking very, very much forward to Sunday evening, November the 6th. Thank you so much. The honor is all mine. Thank, thank you, Sasha. Thank you. Thank you.